Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 90 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, I'm going to give you some tips on using the radio filter. Now, there were a couple videos in the past where I did talk about the radio filter and offered a tip or two in those videos. I'm going to cover those tips again in this video, but I'm going to cover a couple other tips as well. Now, you probably know if you're in the develop module, the radial tool is the second tool from the right in this little tool palette. And you could do a lot of different things to your image with the radial filter. You could affect uh, color balance, exposure, contrast, highlights, everything listed here. And for this sake of this example, I'm just going to mess with exposure a little bit. And I just want to draw a filter on the image somewhere. So what I would do is I would just click down with the left mouse button and drag the, uh, the mouse out and I have a radial filter. And by default, the radial filter will affect outside of the circle or oval that you drew. And in this case, you could see it's affecting the outside of the image. If you'd like to switch that and invert it, there's just a little invert checkbox right here at the bottom. That way you're affecting inside the radial filter. So if you have a lion cub and you want to brighten, let's say, the lion cub's face, you would invert the mask and then turn exposure up a little bit and you would brighten up the lion cub's face. Now, on the other hand, if you'd like to leave the relative brightness of the lion cub's face alone and you'd like to darken everything around it, you would then keep that invert mask checkbox off and then turn exposure down and you would keep the face this you know the same exposure it was and darken everything around it and you could affect the feathering of your effect by just dragging this slider right here and you could see you could have it very sharp and distinct or heavily feathered now i'm just going to leave it very sharp for a second to show you that if you hover over the filter you'll get an overlay and that's showing you exactly what the radial filter is affecting. Now there's a keyboard shortcut for that. You could hit the O key on your keyboard and you'll see the effect and you could hit the O key again to toggle it off. You also could click right here in the toolbar. Now if you don't see the toolbar on your computer, hit the T key on your keyboard that turns that toolbar on and off. And you'll see over towards the left, it says show selected mask overlay. You could click there and you'll get that overlay as well. If you'd like to change the color of that overlay, hold the shift key in and hit the O key and you'll toggle through different colors for the overlay. Then again, when you want to turn it off, hit the O key. Now, also you'll notice to the left here, it says show edit pins. I have mine on auto. And what that means is when the cursor is over the image, I see these edit pins. When I come off the image, the edit pins go away. You could also change that to anything you'd like. You could have them always show. You could have them only when that specific um, radial filter is selected will those pins show for that selected overlay. Or never. I prefer to have mine set to always. And again, you could come in and you could move it around. You could grab one of these handles and affect the size. Now let's say that you want to drag it way out, but it's not far enough. I want to go further than I, than I could drag. Well, what you could do is go over to the left panel while you're in the develop module and right to the right of where it says navigator, you'll see fit fill one to one. You may say uh, different sizes here. And what you want to do is pick a size, something like one to eight or one to 16. And when you do that, it makes the image very small. And then you could grab these handles and drag them far beyond the edge of the image, like that. And then when you're done, go back and click on Fill. And you'll be back like that. Now again, I want to get rid of this overlay. I'm going to hit Delete. Now, um, if you want to do a perfect circle, it's very easy. Just hold the Shift key in and drag out, and you'll create a perfect circle. Also, if you're going to adjust the circle, I want to make it larger or smaller, but I want to keep the dimensions, that perfect circle, hold the shift key in and grab a handle and you will keep that circled dimension. Now, if you, let's say, have an oval 
and you want to keep this exact dimension for the oval, hold the shift key in as well, and you'll keep that oval dimension. So everything will uh, be equal. As you drag out the side, it's also going to go further on the top and bottom as well. If you come outside, just outside of, let's say, an oval like this, you'll see the cursor turns into a double arrow, and you could rotate your radial filter like that. And then you could hit delete when you don't want it, like I don't want it. And the last thing you could do is just hold the command or control key in. It's command if you have a Mac, control if you have a PC, and just double click on the image somewhere. And you'll get this perfect radial filter that just perfectly hits the edges of the image like that. So if that's something you want to do and you want to just like give a vignette, then that's an easy way to do a vignette. You could just uh, double click like I said while holding in the command or control key in. When you're satisfied with your radial filter and it's all done, you could just close it. The other thing I probably should mention is if the radial filter is affecting a part of the image you don't want it to affect. If you look here where it says mask, it says new edit brush. Click on brush. Then what happens is the brush tool opens. You want to go to erase. So go down here at the bottom and click on erase. And don't touch any of the sliders. The sliders are going to be in the exact position they were for your radial filter. But now we're going to erase it. And we could get a bigger brush or a smaller brush by hitting the bracket keys. And then I could erase the filter over where I don't want it. Of course, that is absolutely horrible. So you might want to turn feathering up on your brush and make it look a little better. But that just gives you an idea what you could do if you want to remove the filter from a part of the image you don't want the filter applied. And when you're done, you could just go back to edit and you're back to your radio filter. Or you could just, in this case, since I destroyed the image, I'm just going to delete it. So that's it. That's some radial filter tips all boiled down and put into one video. I hope that helped you. I hope that taught you something you may not have known about the radial filter. And thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.